What if Germany was partitioned differently? After Germany lost the Second World War, the United States of America, Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, and United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, as agreed on in the Yalta Conference, partitioned Germany. The USA got Bavaria, Wurttemberg, Baden, Hesse, and Bremen. UK got North Rhine, Westphalia, Lower Saxony, Schleswig Holstein, and Hamburg. The USSR got Mecklenburg, Brandenburg, Saxony, Anhalt, Thuringia, and Saxony, with France also getting Rhineland, Palatinate, Baden, and Wurttemberg, Hohenzollern and all four parish in Berlin. All lands west of the Otter and Nice Arrivi were given to Poland as a compensation for losing Kresy, but the Soviets took Konigsberg and renamed it Koloningrad. On January 1, 1947 the British and American occupation zone were united into the by zone and on August 1, 1948 the by zone and the French occupation zone united into the tri zone. In 1949 the tri zone became THR Federal Republic of Germany or West Germany while the Soviet occupation zone became the German Democratic Republic, or East Germany. But what if that didn't happen? What if Germany was partitioned differently? I will look at the four most famous Parisian plans. The Roosevelt Plan, the Churchill Plan, and the infamous Morgenthau Plan. In the Roosevelt Plan Germany was meant to be divided into five countries. Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg become Bavaria, the Lower Rhineland, Palatinate and Hesse become Hesse-Saxony, Thuringia and South saxony anhalt become Saxony, Westphalia Lower Saxony and Schleswig-Holstein become Hanover ANS Magdeburg, Brandenburg, Mecklenburg Pomerania and Silesia become Prussia. Looking at the partition of our own timeline Prussia and Saxony are occupied by the Soviets, Bavaria and Hesse are occupied by the Americans and Hanover is occupied by the British. The Saarland and Upper Rhineland are under international occupation. In Prussia and Saxony communist regimes are established under Wilhelm Pike and Walter Ulbricht. In Hanover giving a restoration of the monarchy is possible. But not the head of the House of Hanover would be king, but probably a Windsor because these two houses are related, and that would ensure a loyal Hanover. A possible candidate would be Henry, Duke of Gloucester who is the brother of George VI. Looking at modern-day elections in Hesse the two main parties would be the Conservatives and Labour. In Bavaria and Hesse republics are established with their first chancellor being Hans Ehard George August Sinn. Their two main parties are the Conservative Christian Social Union and the Nationalistic Bavarian Party for Bavaria and Conservative Center and Social Democratic Party for Hesse. The Cold War still breaks out and Hanover, Bavaria and Hesse join NATO while Prussia and Saxony join the Warsaw Pact and as time progresses regionalism would take shape in these smaller Central European nations, which would probably even expanded by the Allies. For example schools may teach that regional dialects like Low Saxon or Bavarians are separate languages the same way Dutch is its own language. Hated or not, but the Warsaw Pact still collapses and Prussia and Saxony become democracies. The two main parties for Saxony are the Christian Democrats, and the alternative for Saxony, while for Prussia these are the Social Democrats, and alternative for Prussia. In 1999 alongside Poland, Hungary and Czechia they join NATO. In this timeline Germany is never reunified and stays divided like with most of its history. The Churchill plan has to be the most goofy plan of these three. The Rhineland was meant to be under international occupation similar to the Roosevelt Plan, but here Germany was to be divided into two. The Protestant North would become North Germany, and the Catholic South become South Germany. But South Germany doesn't just contain Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg but also includes Austria, Hungary and Carpathia. Churchill's reasoning was so that the Soviet Union can't get it. Churchill actually promised Otto von Habsburg Lorraine that he'd rule over a re-established Danubian Federation, and this seems to be that one and so the South is a federation under the Habsburg. The North meanwhile could end up facing three fates. It could be under Soviet rule, Anglo-American rule, or like Austria in our own timeline become neutral. The European Union may never exist as it was created out of the European coal and steel community which was mostly created because France wanted coal and steel from the Sauerland and Ruhr which are now under international rule. If they are a democracy the two main parties for the North are the Christian Democrats and Social Democrats which can also be applied to the South.
Ironically giving that Hungary is part of Danubia the 1954 World Cup finale would be North Germany versus South Germany, but here the South probably ends up winning. North Germany could as I said join either of the two blocs or none, but the South would defiantly join NATO and Carpathia would border the Soviets directly. Giving that Ludwig Erhard was Bavarian the Wirtschaft's wonder probably hits the South earlier who may have a stronger economy than the North. The Soviets still collapse and the Warsaw Pact disintegrated. Seeing that the Soviet threat is gone Hungary may declare independence from Danubia, reducing the amount of members from 4 to 3. It is also possible that Carpathia declares independence from Hungary and joins Ukraine. But with Hungary being sparred from communism right-wing parties would be less successful and Vikar Orban would never rise to power. In 2011 Otto I dies and his son becomes king as Karl I. In this timeline Germany is divided into two and both sides would develop differently, but here the divide is north-south and not east-west. And now lastly the Morgenthau plan. In it Poland got Upper Silesia and Southern SD Prussia, the Soviets got Konigsberg, Denmark got Schleswig and France got the Sauerland and Palatinate. The west of Germany would become an international zone that contains most of Germany's economy. The south would become a republic similar to modern-day Germany, but in terms of elections it would be like Japan. In that one party, the Christian Democrats will every election and second parties only get into the government through coalitions unlike North Germany. The big change however is the west in it its industry would be complete removed and its people would be forced to farm. This would have caused the death of 25 million people. That's the same amount of Soviet or Chinese casualties in World War II with a fraction of the population. This would be a defeat for the US. THR Nazis warned that the Allies will utterly destroy Germany and now he was proven right. This would also be a victory for the Soviets as they would win the propaganda war. Once the Americans do leave Germany all three government collapses instantly and the three Germanys either unite under a national socialist or a communist regime. Germany would simply remilitarize and probably even ally with the Soviets against the West the new German government would be even MLRI radical than the German Democratic Republic or the German Reich, probably like Burgundy in the New Order. World War III would break out in the 60s or 70s, but this time Germany owns nukes. They probably will not win the war, but it will surely cause far more death than World War II. It could even see a complete destruction of the world meaning that nobody wins. That third timeline is easily the most dystopic one of the three. It would cause by far the biggest genocide in history being three times more brutal than the Holocaust. It would result in an even more vengeful Germany and possible the end of the world as we know it simply because an American politician was spiteful. As a bonus, I also present Doha divided Austria. In our own timeline Austria was perishioned into an American Soviet, British and French occupation zone like Germany, but in 1955 these four nations agreed to withdraw if Austria stays neutral. In this timeline an agreement isn't made and in 1949 the American, British and French zones unite into the Republic of Austria while the Soviet zone becomes the Austrian Democratic Republic. In 1955 West Austria joins NATO ANS, East Austria joins the Warsaw Pact. It is possible that East Austria under Johann Koplanik builds a wall in Vienna so that East Austrians can't go to the West. After Koplanik dies in 1965 Franz Murray becomes General Secretary of the Austrian Democratic Republic. The Warsaw Pact still collapses and so does East Austria. Murray was forced to abdicate in 1989 and Walter Silvermeyer becomes General Secretary, but it was too little too late and in 1990 alongside Germany Austria reunifies. Nowadays East Austria is more right-wing and tends to vote for the right-wing populist Freedom Party of Austria. East Austria is also overall poorer and more atheist than the rest of the nation. Austria would be in this timeline a divided nation, but it would also be in the North Atlantic Treaty Organization instead of being a neutral nation. These alternative portions have complete different outcomes from Holy Roman Empire to Electric Boogaloo to a reformed Austria-Hungary to nuclear Armageddon, but we wouldn't have one united democratic pro-Western Germany except in the bonus timeline which also has Austria that copy-pasted German history.
If you liked the episode, leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe. Goodbye.